Hi, I'm Alex Weicker, and I work in two areas of ADR. On the one hand, I'm the creative director for Arbitrator Intelligence. Arbitrator Intelligence is a nonprofit startup, and we're working to develop an interactive community sourced informational network to gather information about international arbitrators and make that information more equally and systematically accessible to practitioners all over the world. If you're interested in learning more about our project, you can check out our website at www.arbitratorintelligence.org. On the other hand, I'm also a mediator. I do multi-stakeholder public policy mediation um, in the area of the environment and energy. My day-to-day -day work probably isn't exactly what people think of when they think of a career in ADR, since most days, especially the work that I do with Arbitrator Intelligence, is not doing mediation or arbitration. Um, it's more like entrepreneurship. It's at the nexus of entrepreneurship, philanthropy, academia, and international arbitration. Since we're still pretty early in our project, we've been working on it for a couple years, I tend to do something different every day. You know, some days I am researching technology or the international arbitration industry or talking to practitioners and then integrating these ideas into our project. Some days I go to conferences, some days I write blogs and PR, do graphics design, uh, oversee our website. And because I'm a director, I also work on strategic development and business development and oversee corporate affairs. So it's really multifaceted and diverse. It's a lot of fun. And because we're building a project that's going to help out a lot of people, it's also intrinsically motivating and, and rewarding. My path to ADR and where I am in my career right now, it's been kind of circuitous. And I think it's kind of a good lesson for anybody how you never know where your career or your life is going to take you for that matter. I started off in, in China. I lived in China for about the People's Republic of China for about six years. And when I first got there, I was doing all kinds of different things. I was, I was learning the language. I spent a year studying traditional Chinese medicine. And after a little while, the natural environment in China, the air, the water, the land, it really started to bother me. And I wanted to figure out some way that I could do something about it. But at the time, I really didn't know what I could do. So I knew I, I, knew I needed to learn more. So I enrolled in a graduate program, really a uh, cool program at Nanjing University. It was a cooperative program with Johns Hopkins University from the United States. And you know, half of our students and half of our faculty were Chinese and half of our students and faculty were international. And you know, the Chinese students took most of their classes in English and the international students took most of their classes in Chinese. And we all lived together in this, this international dormitory. Um, so you can imagine in this kind of crazy graduate school environment, how how many miscommunications and cultural conflicts we had. It was kind of a, a daily occurrence. So on this background, I was studying international climate law and working on my thesis in that. And I was doing field research um, on Chinese environmental issues and energy issues. And at some point, I realized that these complex environmental issues at their heart they're people problems. And technology is wonderful and, and policy is wonderful, but if you really want to find a solution to many of the most complex environmental issues of our day, you really need to figure out some way to help people cooperate and, and work together to, to figure out a solution that's tailored to their own specific circumstances. So that's what brought me to negotiation and dispute resolution. And after I left graduate school, I went to law school and I kept on studying dispute resolution. While I was there, I had some, I met some amazing faculty um, who pulled me into the world of international arbitration. Uh, Catherine Rogers, she's been great. Um, she got me involved in a number of research projects in the area. And I worked on the third restatement of the U.S. law of international commercial arbitration. At the same time I was doing that, I also 
wanted to learn more about mediation. I enrolled in a facilitative mediation training program, and I started volunteering at a local mediation center doing dispute and custody mediation. I really enjoyed that, and now I'm uh, certified in, 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 uh, in divorce and custody mediation in Pennsylvania. So after I graduated, um, the professor who worked international arbitration, she started this, this um, arbitrator intelligence project, which I was fascinated with, and we had a good working relationship, so she pulled me in, and I got really lucky there, and we've been working on that since. On the other side of the spectrum, I also had some, some faculty friends who w were working on this, this project that was doing this local uh, dispute assessment of a local natural gas dispute. And so they asked me if I could work on that with my environmental background. So I worked on that for about a year. I loved it. And towards the end of that year, I really realized that I loved all of the work I was doing. In it didn't matter if it was arbitration on the AI project or if I was doing uh, multi-stakeholder dispute resolution. I loved it and I really wanted to tailor my career to grow in both of these directions. So while I've been developing, I've, I've talked with a lot of practitioners in, in mediation, particularly also arbitration about you know, how to build a career and I get a lot of advice. And a lot of people say, um, both on both sides, both mediation and international arbitration, that you really need to start off as an attorney, and you need to build up your practice and get expertise, maybe be a judge, and you can go into it. Um, at the same time, a lot of these same people, they also have told me that mediation is what they really wanted to do for their whole career. Maybe they've been in their career for 20 or 30 years, and it was only towards the end of their career they could really develop that mediation profession. That to me always sounded kind of you know, depressing. Like this was something that you, you really wanted to do, but it, it took that long to move into it. So fortunately I've had other people have given me advice that you can move into the mediation profession or the ADR profession. And I'm telling you that you definitely can. I'm a, I'm a testament to that. There's lots of different areas that you can go into. I don't know if there's any silver bullet on how you can do that, but I think that there are some tips that you can you can take to, to develop your career in the path that, that you wanted to develop. Oh, first of all, I think um, people are definitely everything in this industry, not, not just when you're doing the actual mediation, but building the relationships and helping people, you know, helping connect other people to projects that they would be a good fit for that you know of and then developing those relationships so that you know when they have a project that that comes up they know your your particular skills and your expertise and your focus and making sure people know that i think that's that's really important i also think it's really important to get experience in, in this field experience is everything so one way to do it at the beginning and all the time, actually, I probably will never stop volunteering is, is to do volunteer work. But that can be challenging, too, because you can get sucked into a lot of volunteer projects in, in this particular uh, profession. I know I remember early on in my my career, I was at one point you know, I was doing a ton of volunteer work. And at the same time, because I had to make a living too, because the volunteer work didn't pay anything, I was doing all these these other contracts. So I ended up being pulled in a lot of directions professionally. I had to keep up on a lot of different areas of, of news and uh, developments in, in case law and so on. It was, it, was, it was very difficult and I wouldn't recommend uh, developing in too many different areas at, at the same time. But all in all, I think that it's important that you stay true to yourself, you keep your keep your eye on that North Star, be fearless, be yourself, and you can make it. It's it's a it's a wonderful profession. I have I've enjoyed it. I enjoy it every day. It's it's always growing and changing. It's it's a skill set that that overlaps into many areas of life and just keeps on 
getting deeper and, and giving the more the more that we develop in this career. It's, it's wonderful. And so thank you very much. Bye.